Hello everybody, um, I'd like to introduce you to my latest acquisition. Uh, it's a refractor telescope, a Starwave 102ED F7 telescope with a flattener and reducer. Okay, so here's the box. It's a nice combination of aluminium and plastic inserts and uh, everything's contained within there very nicely, I have to say. Um, so, and that includes one of these, which is a Starwave 0.8 reducer and flattener with an M48, and it's already got a Canon T-ring fitted on to the back of it. Um, so that's ideal, and I'll explain that a little bit later on. Okay, so let's get the scope out. Okay, so here it is. Um, yeah, it's a lovely telescope, not brand new. It's about four years old, but it's in really, really good condition. Um, so I'm really pleased with the purchase I've made on this. Um, yeah, where to start? Okay, nice cast rings uh, with the dovetail. It's got a Vixen style dovetail on at the moment. I could put a bigger one on, I guess, but uh, it seems to be okay. Um, although not really tried it out as yet. Uh, on this side we have a two-speed focuser, um, so yeah, we have the coarse control and the fine control in the middle there. So uh, yeah, it looks nice and compact at the moment, but this is because we have a uh, extending dew shield. That's probably gone off the edge of the screen now, <laughs> um, so that's when it's fully out. Let me just put it back in for now. So uh, a lot easier to transport, a locking screw there. While we're talking about the focus, uh, let me just uh, move that into, into view a little bit better because it's huge. The focuser on this is a three inch focuser across here. So uh, yeah, really big and solid. So I don't think we're gonna get much movement out of that there really. Um, there are three on the back here. I'm not sure we're going to be able to get this into view properly. So on, on the back end, um, we have, first of all, inch and a quarter. Keep that in place. Then we've got the three bigger screws, which gives us a two inch um, arrangement. And then what we also have is the ability to unlock this and rotate this around. So this is uh, a bit at the enables you to frame if once you've got the camera mounted in there you can turn it around and frame things up a lot easier so yeah and then lock it in place this side we have um, so one actually directly onto the, the focuser itself underneath so that rests on that plate and the other one is on the top so what else do we have? The ability with that one to rotate everything as well. So if, if I find that the um, this is catching on anything below, then I can rotate the whole thing. And of course I can use that to frame things up as well. And then just lock that off. So that's not, not the focus lock, that's the rotational lock. The focus lock's the one on the bottom. And uh, then we have the reducer. Um, so this is a uh, yeah flattener and a reducer. It works at 0.8. So that will slide in there quite nicely and get tightened up. With these three, and I can mount the camera directly onto the back there. So why do we need that? Well, let me just take the front cover off. So hopefully you can see here uh, what's written underneath. Um, and it's basically saying it's a Starwave 102 715, so it's 102 millimeters diameter on the lens, and uh, 715 is the focal length. ED meaning uh, it's um, oh, something dispersion glass, so it's uh, it's. Yeah, it basically is trying to correct for the um, the, the colour 
issues that you often get with um, cheaper refractors. And it's got a serial number on there as well. So 715 millimeters, an F7 telescope. Um, as you know, I like astrophotography, so the problem with the F7 is it's a little bit slow. Um, but putting the reducer on it with the camera, it flattens the field out, so we shouldn't get any distortion out to the corners. And also, um, it reduces the focal length down to 523, I think it is. So uh, that makes it an F5 point something. So that should be a lot better for uh, astrophotography. Okay, so why did I want a refractor along with my Newtonian 10 inch from Skywatcher? Um, well, if we use this site uh, called Astronomy Tools, um, this offers various things, including a field of view calculator, which I've already got open. And what I've set up here is uh, three boxes showing the field of view that's available with my camera and telescope. So the red box, the smallest one, is the Explorer 250P. Okay, mine's a PDS, but anyway, uh, with the Canon and uh, no no Barlow or reducer. So what you can see is the M45 Pleiades subsisters in there, and you can see I can really only get four or five stars from the constellation in there. The yellow box is the 102, the new one. Um, and then the green box on the outside is the 102 with the Canon, but with a reducer, part of the reducer fitted to it as well. So that shows that I get a much bigger field of view using this shorter focal length. So the other part is concerning the uh, suitability of the camera with the scope. Um, so under calculators, you'll see here it says CCD suitability. Um, and on that page, it gives you some text, I'll let you read it. Um, but basically what we're looking for uh, using typical seeing is that we want um, this many arc seconds per pixel. So what we can do is we can come down, um, select the, the scope. We can put in the camera, which in this case is the Canon. OK, see, and what you see here is it's in the green, ideal pixel size in this range. So I also have another camera, um, which is an ASI 290. There we go, this one. So what you see with this camera, which is a smaller sensor and much smaller pixels, is that the this combination leads to a slight oversampling and requires good mount and careful guiding. So it shows up errors a lot e more easily if it's like this. And I, what I found is using this this camera is I get bloated stars where the the guiding is not good enough to to cope with it. Um, but then if I just change to the 102 and put that in, what you see is I'm immediately back into the green. Uh, which is good, and that's even without the, the Barlow reducer. So um, if I go for the 0 0.8 reducer, which is what I've got, I'm pretty much perfect in there. Uh, 1.05 um, arc seconds per pixel. So that will be perfect. So this camera I can now start using again with this telescope. That works really well. And in fact, the camera, if I have it with the Canon, uh, again, is still very good even with the reducer so I'm still in the green so I get to use more equipment with that bigger field of view and get a good um, um, resolution from my uh, cameras as well